coming back to the UK in the winter, we very quickly, like within a day, worked out. It's uh, cold. Yeah. And we were like using LPG like you wouldn't believe. Um, I think we went through a third of a tank in the first day in a little bit. So, um, yeah. Thankfully, on the way back to the UK in Spain, I decided to make little purchases on Amazon and eBay. I think the good thing was that on the on the last few days in there, we'd, mm. we it started getting colder. Yeah. So we knew then, it's like, oh, this is actually using a lot more LPG than we first thought. So this is all about us fitting a diesel heater, and I say us because you know we're a team. I so did, I did do I did do lots of sitting and and confirming. You fed the nozzle through the diesel tank. Yeah, that was brilliant. I'm gutted I didn't video that. Yeah. That I was very proud of that. So if you need any hints. Yeah, the tank comes totally kind of like you know blank um, and you choose its orientation and depending on the orientation would determine where you place the exit nozzle where the fuel line then goes into so um, there's no way of getting your hand in that tank and the hole that you drill in is just big enough for the exit nozzle so that was your little task wasn't it yeah couldn't even get my little finger through that that hole let's go through what we did it was a very straightforward process literally you are building um, the diesel tank from scratch um, so that's that bit done. Mandy did that bit. Uh, we then built the diesel heater. So you have to build up where the exhaust pipe goes, the fitment plate, the air intake, and ultimately where you're going to fit it. Team gadgets. <laughs> uh, we've been through the manual, which is iffy. Interesting. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a guide more than a manual, isn't it? Oh yeah, if it were, I, I can't. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, a guide. <laughs> uh, so what we've determined it is. Um, if you set up your air intake this side and the hot air outlet is that side, so this is the bit that's going to give you hot air in the van, the exhaust is on this uh, side and the air intake is on that side. Obviously, that's where your fuel pipe goes. So we've installed the plate. That's all bolted down, 10mm bolts. Um, you've got the double clamp there on the exhaust because you want to make sure that exhaust is really well sealed. Nothing's coming through there, so that's why the double ring clamp's on there. Uh, standard Jubilee on the air intake. And then you've got this sleeve, and it really is just a little bit of a pipe, nothing really special to it, um, which goes over the nozzle on the diesel heater, and then is the right diameter then that the fuel line sits in there. And the reason why the fuel line is so tiny is that regulates the fuel flow. So if you do change the fuel line at all, just make sure that the last bit to the diesel heater uses as much as this as possible so this regulates the actual fuel sort of supply rate if you like so i just ripped off some of the cardboard from the box it came in to make myself a little template for the holes so i can then take this to the boot area with a pen and then mark out the center points of the holes we had three options Two were in the back, one was right in the boot, out of the way. Uh, one was underneath where Mandy's foot of the bed is because there's a false floor which covered just where pipes are connected and stuff like that, but there's enough space for it. And another one was under the passenger seat. Looking at the three kind of options, it quickly worked out that the best one was actually the one under your bed, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And we weren't missing or losing out on any other storage space by putting it there, which was perfect, really, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So this understairs cupboard, you may recognise it when I did that auto switch install. Uh, if you've not seen that video, I'll link it now. Um, essentially, it's so that whether we're on hookup or the inverter, that auto switches to turn all the van electrics on um, between the two. So what I need to do now is just take a quick uh, look underneath the van. So I'm using that reference point there, uh, which is a hole they've drilled for um, the marker light on the, uh, the amber marker light on the side of the van. So it's just at the back of the wheel arch, amber marker light. And then what I'm obviously going to do is work out if there's a space in the middle there to drill those holes there, the two holes for the exhaust and the air intake, and then the one from the fuel pipe as well. So these are the weather conditions right now. As you can see, it's, um, yeah, it's frosty. Uh, the van's filthy. Uh, it's nice and foggy. <laughs> the perfect weather really to uh, crawl underneath a van. This is my marker that I was pointing at. So that's gonna give me a line to inside the cupboard there, in the middle. There's the indicator. And that's how much space we've got to work with. So yeah, I might well run the fuel line down there, all the way to the boot, which is where the uh, 
the fuel tank's going to be. Put the fuel pump there. Um, and then we'll have the air intake and exhaust coming through the floor there. The sandwich that is our floor, which is a top layer of hardwood, a bottom layer of fiberglass, and a middle bit of fiberglass and foam, styrofoam, something like that. I realized quite quickly then that that wouldn't like heat being near it. So I made a much bigger hole in the floor so that when the diesel um, heater dropped into that hole, I could then line the inside of that hole with foil so that it protected it. Mm -hmm. That's what it looks like on the underside, the hole I've created. And I've used a bit of the tubing that came with it for the air pipes to create a bit of a barrier around there so that those uh, polystyrene bits are protected from the exhaust. So it's all nice and uh, trapped down the sides and everything like that. I've got my fuel pump in and uh, the apparently optimal angle at 45 degrees. So that's in. And I've got the exhaust done, including the silencer. So that's all in. And the silencer is going down towards the back of the van. So in that direction, uh, and the air intake is obviously off to this side, so they're completely separated. So there's obviously less a chance <laughs> that the air intake is going to pick up fumes. Mandy's been doing a fuel tank, so I need to put a hole through there. And uh, then install the fuel tank inside the van on the back door. And then pop the other side of the fuel line in there as well. So that way then we are uh, good to go and everything's internal. Um, everything's ready to be wired in. I've not powered up everything yet because I wanted to make sure that all this was done. So the first time it powered up, it had fuel and everything was installed ready to go. So there we go. That's where the fuel line's coming in down there. Just need to uh, tack that into place now. And for now, I've just put it up there and we've put the, uh, the fuel tank on the back. There we go. It was about five litres. So hopefully that'll last us <laughs> at least a few days. And generally that was the installation, very simple installation, very simple um, setup of all the components, despite the slightly dodgy English. Oh, it was funny. <laughs> in the, there's in there's the a lot of entertainment in that instruction booklet, definitely. Yeah. And then like I say, it was just a matter of fuel line. So it comes from diesel heater, pump, fuel line goes to filter, filter goes into a tank. The tank I've mounted on the near side rear garage door. Uh, the hinges on that door are perfectly okay, so it supports the weight okay. It's a 15 litre tank, and at our, what we've had it now, four days? Mm. Yeah, four, four days. We're roughly talking about a day and a half, uh, sorry, a litre and a half a day. Yeah. Uh, we'll go over costs in a minute on that one, but um, yeah, 15 litres on the side, that's great. The door supports it, and it means I can get the fuel line nice and quickly to the diesel heater as well. I think it runs about um, two and a half, three feet, so it's not too bad at all, really. It's a nice thing, because it has to be a decent distance away from the diesel heater in the first but, instance, Yeah, but not, but not too, too far. far. Yeah, so the initial priming of the diesel heater, it powers up and it runs through its things. It's sucking, obviously, the diesel from the tank to the heater. A couple of little tips I learned on that one. Don't put the cap on the tank because with the vacuum of the tank, um, it doesn't suck so fast. Who misses? Yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, leave the cap off on the initial prime um, and that comes through a lot faster than so it took being buzzed by aircraft. They found us. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it took uh, three goes at prime in it. Uh, which is perfectly okay it knows what to do all you do when it comes up with the error code to say it's not primed wait 30 seconds for it to kind of stop trying switch it off you know usual thing <laughs> wait 30 seconds switch it back on again go through the whole process again and like I say three times of that and it fired up no problem whatsoever um, and it's been pretty much as reliable ever since really you just turn it on and bob your uncle Yep, and it's really good that it's, I mean, we did get a little remote fob with it. Yeah. Um, which we've been told by other people that have it. It's, it's got a really good range on it, so yeah. you can kind of switch it on if you've got your van parked outside your house, you know, those with houses. <laughs> um, the, uh, you can switch it on from out there and yeah. it reaches well enough. Um, but because you've managed to put it at the bottom of the bed with the trimmer thing, it's to the foot of my bed. Yeah. And so I can literally just lean over and put the heat on when it gets a bit cold. So it's, yeah. it's really good. It's, and it's a really easy to use little screen as well. I yeah, like it's that. fairly basic. I mean, you've got quite a few features on there that we've not used. I'll go over those in a minute. Um, but yeah, as far as the installation, pretty much all we did after that was determine how we were going to attach it into, like I said, the trimmer 
uh, ducting system mm. which we've now had two goes at and I think we've got it there now so that's it all finished off all neatened up now so the cabling's done on the inside um, it's now joined into the ductwork on the outside slightly odd different sizes in everything fortunately the Truma stuff slides straight into the 75 mil of that so I'm guessing theirs is like 72 mil or 70 mil or something so that fits in there that fits in there um, that is basically sort of packed and taped so that that then comes down and then feeds through the rest of that so that's it really obviously you gotta make sure it's got enough air to breathe so that's why this area is pretty good uh, it's not a sealed area there's big gaps underneath there there's gaps underneath there and gaps underneath there so um, it can pull up all the air it needs like i said there's two covers that go over the top there you can see the little pieces it sits on so those pieces of wood go over the top there and then mandy stores all the stuff there and then there's another shelf there as well that drops down and the only real hot part of it is this bit here just the the cowling at the front that's the only hot part so uh, what we're going to do now is we've got some of this uh, foil wrap so we're going to wrap those pipes all up in foil um, it was all a matter of getting the correct amount of airflow so that the the pipe that comes to the front here um, gets a really good airflow so it gets all the way to us and then the pipes at the back are at the back of that airflow because we we're finding the back of the van was roasting yeah. and the front was cold so we've flipped that around and that now works fine um, not really used any of the original stuff that came with it the kit that the diesel heater I ordered um, had absolutely everything with it it's the most comprehensive kit I've seen it's a five kilowatt rated heater of which I'm told actually it's three kilowatt because the three kilowatt and five kilowatt are all the same so it could be that the software just makes the pump work harder to deliver more uh, diesel so it combusts for longer or something like mm. that i don't know um but yeah it's a good kit it's 90 quid thereabouts i'll put the link in the video description down below and i'll also link it on our website to which i wanted to actually say if i can just interject a lot of people are saying john um i've had a look for your video about um the strip lights you installed or your solar panel i can't find it everything is on our website everything that's on our van of significant kind of um importance to what we do or that we think is great is on our website or so anybody it's... that's previously asked about it yeah. if there's something random on there it's because somebody's seen it and asked yeah. about it so we pop it on there it's nice and easy so anything that you want to look for and um, before you look at the video go look at the website and you can see the product if you then want to look for the video you'll probably find it better on our website um, because it's all linked in there and there's a search facility yeah and all the search that kind facility of on the website is actually really good i use it to find the right videos too because it searches the words of our description as well so mm. if we describe what we're doing then it'll find that so going back to the heater i'd say 90 quid really great kit it's got everything in there installation including crawling under the van in the snow repositioning things to make them work better like the pump and getting the fuel tank sorted out i would probably say and, was and getting into a cupboard with an access yes. thing like this so john was <laughs> literally having to fold himself in half to get into literally. the thing so it would have slowed yeah, you down a bit if you're doing this in a blank canvas like you know i would imagine it's two hours install yeah in a probably van, van build yeah. yeah probably took us about four hours in total to install it from start to drilling the hole sort of thing, planning it, um, to kicking it over was probably about four hours, um, which I think is pretty good. Bear in mind, you know, we're installing this in a motorhome and they don't leave a lot of gaps. Well, not ones they want you to find anyway. Yeah. If you go back from our last van. Yeah. But yeah they don't leave a lot of voids or gaps that are big enough for that. Bear in mind, you need an amount of air, so the volume of air for the fan to actually work and push through. You need obviously to be able to get underneath to get fuel line exhaust and air intake for the fresh air combustion um, and then somewhere for it to be open enough that the heat of the actual unit because it does get quite hot at the nozzle end at the front mm. isn't going to burn anything or come in contact with anything so bear all that in mind and that's kind of like something of an issue probably with quite a few motorhomes so we thought we did quite well struggling mm. with that one um, but yeah overall really happy the noise of it outside isn't so bad the ticking of the uh, diesel pump inside is now bearable bear in mind we had it on this morning because it got freezing we don't run it permanently mm. overnight but it got to about was it r5 or something like that yeah and uh, it was only about two degrees outside and it was about 11 degrees inside so i whapped it on because um, 
Cooper doesn't have a little blanket and snuggles and that. Yeah, like we're we fine under the covers at the back. <laughs> through levels one to six of heat, or you can do it through temperature as well. So you can set the temperature whichever way you want as well. Um, it's got a couple of other little functions. If you press those two together, it turns it into a mountain mode, which means it uses less uh, diesel because the air pressure or the air is thinner. So it also means the pump ticks slower. So at night time, we're actually putting it in that. So the pump ticks slower, doesn't keep us awake so much. So that's the two presses of that. And it has got a timer mode as well, which is those two presses. So then now you can set the timer and set it to come on and off at a certain time. That shows you the temperature inside the actual um, heater. That shows you the volts that it's currently getting. Obviously, it's at the end of the line, so um, its volts are dropped while it's using the uh, the diesel plug heater. So while it takes that volts, it'll drop. But normally, it sits about 13 volts, and that's obviously the temperature you've set to. If you press and hold that, you swap between manual mode and auto mode. So heating one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. Or press it again and then you're on the temperature and then the top of the display there is just the current temperature that it's uh, detecting in the van so whilst that thinks it's 22 23 so the real temperature in the van is 17 uh, and again that is just because the heat's got to get from all the way over there through these little pipes and the windscreen and everything obviously is going to let a bit of cold through as well and uh, we'll leave it on number three overnight and that's kind of like bearable for the fan noise and the ticking uh, frequency mm. um, and then sort of like if we want to boost it we'd put it on heat six um, and that really gets the van warm in about sort of 20 minutes half an hour the temperature one is a bit of a weird one so far the the information we got with the control uh, the fascia was a bit limited shall we say yeah, it just keep saying press the button press the button press and we're just one? like okay there's yes. six of them on there five of them five, five of, them, of yeah. them we don't know which one so i've worked out now that there are combinations of each one but i'll probably do a separate video about that rather than boring you all with this one um, but ultimately there is a temperature control on there we've decided it's not actually totally accurate mm. um, so we leave it on between h1 heat one and h6 which is heat six and we just operate between that and that's been all right for us uh, what we found is that it doesn't shut down so say for example if you did it up on temperature and you put it on 21 degrees and the van temperature was 22 23 well the heater still carries on at 21 degrees it doesn't shut down the pump it doesn't stop the fan or anything like that it just carries on so it's different than we were um, used to with the truma system mm. cost wise um like i say it's about a liter and a half a day that we're using uh, and that's like uh, 75 to 80p for red diesel uh, we're choosing red diesel because it's actually easier to find than lpg so uh, it gives us the option to put normal diesel in or red diesel doesn't matter for those of you that don't know red diesel is available vat free or duty free um, for people to use for heating and um, farm vehicles and plant, plant machinery, machinery anything and stuff that's like that. not on the on the road yeah if it basically. doesn't drive on the highway then you can use red diesel so that's what we're using because you know why not but obviously it does give us the point of wherever somewhere that doesn't have red diesel um, that we can chuck normal diesel in it's just going to be more expensive yeah but so we've worked out that's going to cost us about 36 pounds a month bear in mind this is winter right now so we're basing our costs on worst case scenario yeah because what is it outside at the moment it's five degrees five outside degrees, yeah. like i said it's about three degrees overnight so it is important to keep it on um whereas our costs for lpg at this kind of time of year or this temperature uh, would be in excess of about 60 to 70 pounds a month so mm. it's better uh, it's more easily available like I say, you can mix in normal diesel with red diesel. It doesn't matter. The red is an additive that they put in to allow them to detect people that are using it where they shouldn't. Yeah, so if you put it in your car by mistake yeah. um, and the police come, they just dip it. They literally dip it and they can tell if you're running on red. And well, they can even put some um, like um, a tissue next to your exhaust, exhaust yeah. and see if it comes out red. Yeah. So that's it, really. So overall, after a few days, I think it's a success, don't you? I do. Because we've got the ability now to run it on both. I mean, we could have 
both heaters on it at the same time now if we wanted to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the LPG is now going to be used for running the fridge, um, which is still an LPG. Although um, now we're back in the UK, we're going to get that swapped to the compressor fridge that we planned. Um, and obviously cooking, which is crucial for us. Oh, absolutely. So And, and you know, coffee, if we're running on, off, off oh, yeah. and I need, I need to get the kettle on. Yeah. It's even easier than I thought, to be fair. Mm. I was actually slightly dreading the thought of installing it, but no. Yeah. Quite impressed with that one. Yep. Um, and heat-wise, there's something quite crucial as well. We did a bit of um, hand-washing of uh, smalls yesterday. Yeah. And they dried that night. So it's yeah, we um, could much... not believe it, and after hand washing as well, because you know what it's like; they never quite get as good yeah. a, as, as good a spin as a washing machine. Mm. But yeah, brilliant stuff. So it's a really dry heat you get it's from it as good well. Heat. So it's warm. Yeah, I was well impressed with that. So, like I say, um, I'll put the link to the actual one that we bought down in the video description, and I'll put a link underneath it to a generic search for um, eBay should they sell out, because sometimes we do feature products and they sell out quite quickly. Yeah. So I'll do a a search. Um, link as well so you'll still find something that's similar to ours um, and if you've got any questions or anything like that do ask down below and um, we'll try our best to help you out yep and as usual if you do ask down below it, you might be helping somebody else yes so don't worry there's no such thing as a stupid question get it down below if you've got anything you're worried about and if you know of anybody else that's been thinking about fitting a diesel heater to either their van conversion that they've started been running for ages or you know motorhome that you want to future proof your van like we've now done and put a diesel heater in there because it is much easier to get diesel um, then obviously please do share it if you've got any forums that you're a member of share it with them or facebook groups or whatever yeah and somebody told me the other day that they'd put one in or they were thinking of putting one in their summer house so they could use their summer house all year oh round. yeah that'd be cool so it's it? just any because with the diesel tank it's so easy it's yeah. just you put it anywhere i mean they do a version that's standalone now and i've seen people do that so i'll put a link down there to a standalone one as well so if you've got like a home office in your garden and you're working from home right now and it's cold and you're using electric or something like that and it's costing a bomb then um, I'll link another one and all you need for that one uh, it's got everything in built you just need an exhaust outlet so obviously you don't choke yourself yep and power and power so there you go right thanks very much we shall see you for our normal little vlog of um, winter van life stuff on Friday yes but for now thanks very much you take care we'll see you soon see you soon bye, bye.